forever since I've been behind the pulpit. Uh, I didn't make it for any other service, but Dr. Jack, we missed uh, just a wonderful time that we had. Yes. Amen. Really rejuvenated us as a church. It was so awesome. Amen. Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. Beginning reading in verse number 42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Amen. Father, once again, we are so thankful to be here today. We're thankful for your word. <coughs> Lord, we're ever so mindful, dear God, of all the things that are going on around us. But Father, at this time, we pray that you would help us, dear God, to focus attentively upon your word. Help us, dear God, to forget about everything else, dear God, even the time. But Father, may we come boldly to the throne of grace now. May you uh, teach us through God and help us through your word today. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to do what I cannot do. Father, I pray you speak to the hearts of the people today. That, Lord, that we may not leave this place the same way that we come in. And we will be so careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Lord, I pray you take this vessel, that you use it for your glory, dear God. Lord, may we know that when we leave this place, we've heard from heaven. We thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit of how the disciples moved the people, the multitude, from problems to purpose. Purpose must be more important than people. I'm going to say that again and then I'm explaining. Purpose has to be more important than people. Amen. Amen. The people must never become more important than purpose. We must lead others into purpose, mm -hmm. not lead them into their emotions. Amen. And a lot of times what happens is people become to try, they, they try to lead you into your emotions and make you emotional because they believe that if you can make people emotional, you can control them. Mm -hmm. It is never the job of the church to lead people into emotion. We must lead into purpose. That's what the early church was able to do. They was able to bring people into the purpose of the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the early church deliberately did some things, and I believe that if we mimic that we can have the success that they had. One thing that I realized is that if you study something that's successful, then you'll say, okay, if I model, if, if I model myself after that, then maybe I can get the same results, amen? And so if you start a business, you want to get around people that are um, that, that, that are successful in the business that you're trying to start so that you can pick their brain and find out what did they do to get to where they are. Well, the Bible is the same way. There are things that was done that they deliberately did that if we was to say we want to martyr our ministry after that, then we can get results. I want you to understand something. The Bible says in verse number 47 that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want you to understand that when the church do what it is supposed to do, God will do what he will do. Amen? The thing is, people say, well, we're waiting on God. Well, I need you to understand that sometimes God is waiting on us. Amen? And the Bible says that we draw nigh to God, then he will draw nigh to us. Amen? And so while you to work in the food, God is waiting for you to work 
Uh, give me, give me. And the Bible says in parentheses, for he already knew what he was going to do. Amen. Now I need you to understand something that in your life, God already knows what he's going to do. Amen. 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 Now the thing is, are you willing to obey his word so that God can then do what he's going to do? Anyway. So let me let me just let me just give you a few things, amen. That was just laying a little bit of a foundation, but let me give you a few things. I, I want you to notice about what was going on here in our text, amen. First of all, I want you to notice the dedication of the people of God. Now let me just park here and just say that nothing gets accomplished without the people of God being dedicated to the purpose amen. of our church. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Dedication is not just what you say out of your mouth, it is what you do with your life. Amen. Dedication for them wasn't just them giving God praise on a Sunday morning. Dedication for them went a whole lot deeper than that. As I'm going to point it out to you in scripture, look at verse 42, if you will, back in our text of Acts chapter 2, and they continue. Somebody say continue. <laughs> what does it mean to continue? Something. What does it mean? Help me out, because you know I, I, I wasn't real good with English. So help me, no problem. Amen. That's what they did. They kept going. Amen. They kept going. They continue to do it. They continue to do it. They continue to do it every day. They continue to do it every day. They continue to do it. Amen. And I want you to understand something. We are not just talking about. Man, notice that they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the great.
Corinthians 16 real quick. Look at 1 Corinthians 16 real quickly. I believe that God has some wonderful things for us. But it's not going to happen by us just sitting back going, okay, Lord, we're waiting. Amen? We can't sit on our blessed assurance and think that everything is just going to work out. Somebody say amen. amen. We got to get off our blessed assurance. Amen. I like it. And we got to move forward. Amen. First Corinthians 16 and verse 15. First Corinthians 16 and verse 15. First Corinthians 16 and verse 15. Y'all got it? Amen. Amen. I'll repeat it one more time. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15. Amen. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Notice it uses the word addicted. Jump up. 
Mrs. Smart Man back in the back. <laughs> oh my gosh. But they were dedicated. They were dedicated, amen. They were dedicated to the apostles' doctrine. You know what that means? It means they were dedicated to the word of God. Ah, it's hard to be around people that is more dedicated to their feelings than they are to the word of God. Well, this is how I feel. That's how I feel. And this is for me. There's no for me. It is what does the Bible say? Amen. What does the Bible say? The Bible transcends how you feel. Amen. Truth is true. Amen. Amen. Why is it that we try to make the word of God conform to our feelings? Can't make the word of God perform your feelings. The word of God says what it says, amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth its fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he do, somebody said, whatsoever he do, whatsoever he do, shall prosper. Amen. Amen. It shall prosper. Look at Acts chapter 12 real quick. Look at Acts chapter 12. Look at Acts chapter 12. We find say amen. Acts chapter 12. Look at verse 24. Amen. You got it, Acts 12 24? The Bible says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. Woo! You know when the word of God grows and multiplies, do you know what begins to happen? Gossip will stop growing and multiplying. And somebody say amen. amen. Drunkenness will stop growing and multiplying. Fornication will stop growing and multiplying. See, the word of God begins to grow and multiply. There are things that have to cease. The problem with the church is that we're trying to be like the world so that we can have a big church. I'd rather have a small church where the truth is preached than to have a big church where we have to swallow a camel and strain out of that. Preach, Pastor. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, sir. Church has got, got people leading music that they know I've got no business up there leading no music. I don't care if he's gay, you see. Preacher. Preach, Pastor. Preach. I don't care because you see, because of him, there's a lot of people that come to our church. We call that compromise. Yes. We call that compromise. Amen. So you got something against gay people? Not at all. Not at all. Amen. Not at all. I believe they can get saved just like anybody else. Amen. I believe they can get saved just like a drunk. Amen. Just like a prostitute. I believe it with all of my heart. Amen. But we are not put them up somewhere because of the fact that we're saying we want to use your talent, although we don't believe in your lifestyle. All right. Somebody say amen in the house of God. Amen. 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 Somebody need to preach it. Amen. amen. Uh, we walking around with this nappy pandy stuff because we're afraid that we're going to make somebody mad. Praise God. And we are swallowing the truth. Uh. Trying to make everybody feel comfortable. Look at Acts chapter 12. Oh, we just, did we just turn it? Yes. yes. We just turned it to Acts chapter 12? Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Verse 24. Yep, that is where we went. Okay, good. The word of God can never be used to affect the lost if it is not being used to affect the saved. We will never be able to use God's word to affect the lost if it's not being used to affect the saved. Somebody say amen, house of God. First of all. Second of all, notice their discipline. They were very disciplined. Amen. Taste something. Taste discipline to serve God. Amen. Taste discipline to serve God. First of all, they were dedicated. Second of all, they were disciplined. Amen. They were disciplined in their spiritual world. Look back at Acts chapter 2, verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Amen. They were disciplined in a spiritual walk. I want you to know this is how unity is achieved when God's people are all walking.
in the same spirit. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if we all come to church together. It don't matter if we all go so winning together. But if we're not all walking in the same spirit, we are not unified. Amen. Amen. Unity is something that is not man-made. It only comes from the grace of God upon the people of God. Amen. It is not something we just come together and say, come on, brethren, let's be unified. Let's just be in the grids. Uh, unity is much more than just being in the grids. Amen. 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 The people in Acts was lit. By the way, Jesus said to them that they had to love their neighbor, that they had to do good to them, and y'all know the verses. But did you know that in the book of Acts, they actually lived what Jesus said? Amen. They had to live what he preached. Let me ask you something with that in mind. Can people tell what the Bible teaches by the way you live? Preach, Pastor. Can they look at you and say, the Bible must teach that they should not forsake the sending of themselves together. Something about them being in church. Because every time I see them people, they're always going to church. Man, they don't even drink. I wonder if the Bible says anything about drinking. They don't even smoke cigarettes. <coughs> Y'all all right? Play like this do a lot of grenade in the crowd just now. <laughs> No. 
knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. Never got distracted from Jesus. When you take your eyes off Jesus, you begin to deal with all kinds of stuff, including worry, anger, depression, all kinds of frustration. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand something. The Bible says that also, right up verse 42, I missed it. They continue steadfast in apostle doctrine, fellowship, and breaking bread, and in prayers. Amen. You know something? When I read my Bible, I see that the multitude followed Jesus everywhere. Amen? Everywhere he went, the multitudes followed him. There was one place that Jesus went. Come on, man. That Preach. nobody followed him. Preach. You know where that place was? Place of prayer. Jesus went into the mountain to pray alone. There is not much um, celebration there. That is not something that you do to get people to applaud you. That is not something that you do to get attention. Jesus went to a place of prayer because he understood that that was the most important place for him. Amen. If our sinless Savior felt that prayer was so important that he spent hours upon hours in prayer, what happened to the church? We say we're going to have a prayer time on Sunday morning before the service and a handful of people show up. If we said we're going to give away food before the service, <laughs> I got to tell you all this joke because it was kind of funny. It was very funny to me. It may not be funny to all y'all, but it's okay. A man opened a barbershop when he had good community service. And so a Chinese man came in, cut Chinese man's hair, and he was great pan. He said, I'm sorry, I can't accept the money. I have to do this for community service. He came back to work the next day. The Chinese man left him 12 pieces of uh, sushi in front of his door with a thank you note. Wow, that's great. The white man comes in, cuts the white man's hair. The white man was great paying. He said, I'm sorry, I can't accept the money. Um, do this for community service. Came back the next day. White man left him a dozen roses on his doorstep with a thank you card. Black man comes in, gets his hair cut. Tries to pay it. He says, oh, I'm sorry, can't take your money because uh, I don't come to service. Comes to work the next day. Twelve black people stand on the door. <laughs> Of the 
of the United States of America. That's not my Barack Obama's my president. Barack Obama's not in the office no more. <laughs> Jimmy Carter might as well be your president if it's like that. <laughs> or Richard Nixon or somebody. Huh? Pray for our president. Amen. Amen. You know the Bible tells us that we ought to pray for him? Come on, man. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know the Bible teaches that? But mm -hmm. well, I just don't believe in that. Do you believe the Bible? Amen. Pray for our government. Amen. Amen. The Lord used Daniel to turn the heart of a whole government, whole nation. Amen. One man that stood for Christ. One man that stood. He used three young boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo is what we call them. Three. To turn the heart of a nation. God can use anybody. We will just pray. Consecrate ourselves to him. Church, we need, you. We need dedication. We need discipline. We need not get distracted. Don't be like Peter. Start out on the water to Jesus. Start looking around at everything else. So I told you to come and you join a church like this. And boy, it looks good. Amen. It looks good. It's great. Oh, man, this is wonderful. Well, then you start getting out on that water. You start seeing stuff. Free. Huh? Amen. Huh? Free. You start seeing that the people around you are human. Yes, we are. They make mistakes. They mess up. Amen? Yes. When you get that knowledge, what do you do with it? Do you go into the closet and start criticizing people? Start having secret conversations all over the church. Like I told you in Sunday school, and then every now and then a little bit seeps out. I'm not the only one that feels this way. There's a lot of us that feels this way. I'm not the only one, but you're the only one talking. Amen. I'm not the only one. Come on, brother. Let's put this thing right. Amen. Amen. We got one shot. We don't know when the Lord is coming back. We have no idea. It could be tonight. But if Jesus tarries, let's do it right. Amen. We're going to do it. Amen. Yes. Let's do it right. Or let's not do it at all. Amen. Amen. The early church did it right. They didn't waste their time. They said, we are going to get it done. And they did. That's who we are right now. Amen. 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 We're in the fourth quarter. Amen. And you all know that in the fourth quarter, that's even put up time or shut up time. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Some of the greatest intentions was lost in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now it's time. Now it's time. The clock is ticking. Yeah. Amen. We will not ever, nor will it, have a church wide soul winning time. But on Saturday, some of us will meet. And we will go and hit the street. If that's not your cup of tea, that's on you. But we will be on Saturdays. And we will go and hit the street. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to mandate it. Amen. Because your relationship with God should mandate what you do, not your pastor. I'm not going to play the Holy Spirit in your life. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm, I'm going to try not to preach on that on Sundays. <laughs> I didn't say I won't. I said I'm going to try not to. Amen. Pray for your pastor. Amen. Amen. Let's pray.